Hello everyone and welcome to uh, a new series in Elite Dangerous. Uh, this will be just sort of a startup series. I'm not sure how many episodes it's actually going to be, but um, I've created a second account with Horizons enabled as well. And we'll be starting off a brand new commander in this one to sort of give people a sense of how to get started in the game. Um, I'm assuming that you've played all the tutorials so you know how to operate your ship. You know how to do some fighting and that kind of stuff. This is basically a little quick guide on uh, basically how to start doing your first couple of activities that are going to make you money uh, and uh, sort of begin enjoying the content in Elite Dangerous. So I'm going to pop into the Oculus Rift here, which I have set up a quick tour. We have the camera uh, face cam. Say hello to the face cam. We have the Oculus Rift plugs in, which is what allows me to look around uh, pretty naturally. I have a Satec X55 hands-off throttle and stick, or hands-on throttle and stick. Um, my mouse right there. And uh, right there is the is the control cam. Let me just go ahead and pull this down a little, a little closer. Control cam allows you to see exactly what my control scheme is, what I'm doing, what I'm using. I can kind of point to the various buttons and stuff that I have set up. So. Without much further ado, let me get into the Oculus Rift here and we'll get ourselves our new career kicked off. Okay, so here I am in the Oculus Rift. Things are relatively stable. I have this button right there set to recenter my screen. So I'm gonna make sure and do that. Keep everything nice and centered here. That makes sure that when I'm looking forward, it seems I'm looking forward. So you have two choices to uh, kick off with. You have the Horizons Sidewinder, if you've started off with Elite Dangerous Horizons, which is 60 bucks from Frontier Developments. And you have the new commander, uh, which is just the stock Sidewinder in some random federal system with a thousand credits. Um, <clears throat> I'm not going to get into surface landing right away. That's a little added complexity that you can either do on your own or whatever. Basically, with the Horizons Sidewinder, you start off on a um on a ground location so we're going to start off on a random federal system go ahead and pick this one our save is set up i'll go to the start menu and talk about what we have here arena is just a battle arena um basically it's if you have it available you can just fight in fighters or a sidewinder and um and uh, participate in CQC. It's not the full game. Solo play uh, is where you're able to play in the same universe as everybody else in that there's a background simulation running that um, keeps track of commodity prices and everything. Uh, simulates all of that uh, and what impacts individual players have on the galaxy but you don't actually run into any players and you're not never going to be subjected to any form of PvP. You have private groups. This is a new career. I don't have any friends set up or private groups set up, so that's not available, but this is a way to play with your friends and have some multiplayer experience or larger groups. There are larger groups out there um, <clears throat> that isn't the wide open galaxy that is open play. And lastly, there is open play, which is all... Um, any player who's, in, you know, any people who are in here, you'll actually see other commanders, uh, especially in the newbie systems fairly frequently. Um, I encourage you to start off in solo play because, unfortunately, there are still a number of, uh, a very small number, but a number of players nonetheless who like to grief and troll uh, new players as they're just getting started out. This game is complicated enough without having to deal with that, so I say... Get your space legs in solo play and then join open play, you know, after a little bit, after you've got some upgrades for your ship and you have some cash in the bank to pay for any accidents and stuff like that. And we'll talk more about that later. So into solo play we go. So here we are in our Sidewinder in our very first starting location, Trevithick Dock. Um, and we can take a look around the cockpit with our Oculus Rift. Just take a look around. My keyboard down there, my throttle control. Um, joystick control. They don't move right now because I'm, I'm docked and my engines and everything are off. Um, to the left, we have basically your external uh, external sensors and systems. So navigation, uh, transactions from various mission givers, contacts. We have a Beluga liner and an ASP scout flying out there as well as the dock we're currently on. 
uh, sub-targets. If I target something, I can see their sub-targets. And if I had a cargo scanner, I could scan and see their inventory. So that's everything that's outside. A um, little uh, information panel tells you about system information. Basically a paper doll for whatever you have targeted. Your central interface, <clears throat> which is uh, when you're in the, in the uh, docking port like this, will be this interface so you can actually interact with all the docking stuff. Um, otherwise, it'll be a flat radar panel. Then you have your ship's paper doll, which is uh, shows your shield status, hull status, all that kind of stuff. And then you have the power distribution and uh, f fuel and indicators cluster. So um, I'm going to make the assumption if you haven't already done the tutorials, you should definitely go do those before watching the rest of the video because I'm going to assume that you know how to redirect power around your various systems. Um, that's one of the key in, uh, things you can be doing to improve the performance of your ship. And then on the right hand side you have all your internal information. Basically your, your status with uh, various factions, the modules you have installed in their power state, fire groups that are set up, any inventory you have, and functions like turning on your beacon, landing gear, and things like that. Let me just adjust myself a little bit here. But, enough chatting, let's get to flying and actually do this mission. So we have, a, uh, uh, in our communications panel in the upper right, our upper left, we have a message. And it says, Welcome Commander. Manager Singleton says, Dear SimGamer, on behalf of the LTT18486 Jet Energy Company Trust, we are pleased to acknowledge your receipt uh, of a new starship. If you are a new pilot, then we recommend that you complete the training simulations available. You can try these at any time, as well as this ship. We are authorized to provide you with your first mission opportunity, which could earn you 10,000 credits. To claim this bonus payment, travel to Aravate and speak with our contact with LTT18486 Jet Energy Company there. Once you have, hang on, I got these. Woo! Had to sneeze that. Let's go ahead and read this. Continue reading this. Um, once you have launched from this station, we will contact you with further instructions. To launch, simply select launch from your central cockpit controls. Keep looking down too far. Um, make sure to raise your landing gear and take it slow and steady. Keep your eye open for other ships as you move away from the landing pad. All right. And I'm going to go ahead and clean things up, put that in the trash. So, um, I'm curious, how much cargo space do I have anyway? Ship capacity? Four tons. Right, I have four tons of cargo available. So we can launch. Your very first time launching, you're going to have this pre-flight checklist. I need to pitch up. Pitch down. Pitch right. Pitch left. Throttle up. Throttle down. Test my landing gear, which is this switch down. Weapon deploy, that red button there. Target forward, boop, or boop, sorry, wrong button. And primary fire, ding, ding, my trigger finger. You might need to check the UI, uh, UI focus. Usually you hit a key to see the various panels, but as you can see, in virtual reality, which is one of the, this is one of the best games for virtual reality. I say it over and over again. It's not like a broken record. But in this game, all I need to do is look at a panel and it automatically comes up. Look at the chat panel, it comes up. Look at the left panel, it comes up. All right, I'm gonna apply vertical thrust, which I have bound to a little uh, cluster of four, you know, a little controller on my thumb to get up off the station. Landing gear retracted. Flip my landing gear switch. Get clear of this station. And my mission, should I choose to accept it, and I already have, Incoming mission is to head to Arabic, but I have another message coming in. Hello again, Sim Gamer. Now that you have departed the station, you should head to the Aravit star system. To do this, check your navigation panel to the left of your cockpit, and you can plot a hyperspace jump from there. You will also find the transaction tab there, which will list any open missions that you have, including this one. So let's take a look at the trans uh, trans transaction tab first. This information is actually pointing out the mission that I have. It says, Deliver data to McMahon Dock in the airbait system. The data will be stored in the computer will not require any cargo space. 
You re uh, receive your reward upon delivery, and good luck. And it tells me the destination is a particular starport in the system, and I have five days left to complete this. If I wanted to, I could abandon the mission and just go my own way. Totally acceptable thing to do. I'm going to go ahead and... So here's the navigation panel they were talking about. Navigation. I can use my cursor key to select where I want to go. I can go to Dalton Gateway, which is a larger space station. I can keep scrolling down. See all the stars, moons, uh, stations, and settlements that are in this star system. And then we start seeing these icons right here, which are all the neighboring systems that we can actually reach. When you get a more capable ship, you'll see a lot more star systems in that one. Those are, those are basically the neighboring star systems that are one jump away from where you are. So, now there's a little globe icon here showing around Eret, which means that's our mission destination. We are going to tap that one. Click on Lock Destination. <clears throat> uh, you could click on Lock and Engage Hyperdrive, but I'm going to go ahead and use my joystick controls for that. So now that I'm facing the way that I want to be facing, I'm going to go ahead and flip this switch right here. Boop. Frame shift drive charging. To begin the jump to hyperspace. <clears throat> the frame shift drive charges up for a few seconds. I think it's about a 15 second um, queue up. And we are in hyperspace to our very first location. <clears throat> Incoming mission critical message. All right, we've popped out of hyperspace and Aravate and have a new message from the guy. <clears throat> uh, we are pleased to detect your arrival in the system to claim your 10,000 credit bonus payment. You need to dock at Mac McMahon Dock and speak to our contact there. They will be representative of LT18486 Jet Energy Company. To get to the station, use the navigation panel and select the station's name from the list. You can then follow the highlighted target on your HUD and return to normal space when it indicates that it is safe to do so. Once again, we advise new pilots to complete the training scenarios available from the main menu. When you have docked, access station services and then select the mission board to find your contact and complete the registration process. All right, delete that one. Very good. Over to the navigation panel, we need to scroll up. Here's all the places in this system that we can go visit. And we're looking for Mac Ma McMahon Dock, um, which will actually be highlighted because that's our mission destination. So we'll go and select that one. Now I'm looking at the little circle that is um, above and to the left, mostly to the left and slightly above my, my radar. That's the compass. A hollow dot is something your destination is behind you. A solid dot, boop, means that the destination is more or less ahead of you. So we're just going to get our compass lined up so we're pointed straight at it. Here it is, McMahon Dock, uh, about 1,000 light seconds away, and we're going to go ahead and speed towards it. You can see on the radar, there's plenty of... You know, plenty of stars, planets, other ships around. These other ships may or may not target you, but they're all NPCs. If you're in open play, an actual commander, another player, is distinguished by their box uh, being hollow. If you see a hollow box in your radar, that means there's another player in the area. Okay, at 10 seconds away, I'm backing my throttle off to about three quarters of, of the setting here. Um, so you can see the little blue indicator is actually in the middle of this blue band. That means it's the sort of the optimal zone for most maneuverability. Now, if we look to the left, we see a new panel that's come up, uh, a new sort of information panel uh, with some indicators. We want to get our speed down to the correct range and then get the distance down to the correct range and also be facing the target in order to safely disengage from super cruise which is what we're doing right now. Usually at 1 million meters or 1,000 kilometers is where you can safely disengage. So I have dropped by using the uh, frame shift key, I have dropped out of frame shift drive out of super cruise. And now I'm headed for this McMahon dock. 
Within 7.5 kilometers, you need to go over to the contacts panel, select the target, and request docking. Do this every time. If you try to approach a landing pad or enter the toaster of a larger station before doing that, you will be destroyed. That said, you know, don't be afraid to go out in the universe and try stuff. Like, go out there and do things. Um, <clears throat> your sidewinder is always, your starting sidewinder is always free. The worst thing that could possibly happen is you could blow up. As you buy replacement gear for it, you'll have an insurance cost to replace all that, all that uh, gear, but that's totally manageable. So I'm just going to go ahead and watch the kind of awkwardly placed landing pad here. Thank goodness I have virtual reality so I can actually see, just look out my window and see what's going on. Now down, I should see an indication here pretty soon. Warning, landing gear not deployed. Yeah, let's go ahead and take care of that. So my landing gear switch gets centered on the pad and then landing vertical thrust deployed. straight down. Docking ah, successful, engines disengaged. So, we've landed on McMahon Dock, so I'm going to immediately go into Starport Services <clears throat> and deal with this mission. Uh, mission board. This is where you get and turn in all of your missions. So, in virtual reality, I have this huge display, which is actually wider than this, the, the, my screen. Uh, in, on your monitor, you can probably see the entire panel all at once, um, but I can't. So, here's the mission I need to turn in. Welcome, Commander. Thank you for completing the registration details on the trust delivery of your new starship. We wish you good fortune in whatever role you carved out for yourself in deep space. We may be in touch again. Congratulations, we've completed our very first mission. So, I'm going to go ahead and pay the 15 credits to buy the fuel that I need. I'll go to the mission board, and we will see if there are any immediate missions that I want to do. Deliver three units of liquor to LTT 18486. And supply some more stuff for Arabit. So here's one that's actually a nice 13,776 uh, credit mission that's going to use most of our cargo hold um, to do, but it should be pretty straightforward. Move some liquor. <clears throat> so we want to make sure you understand your mission details very clearly when you're doing these missions. This one, convey the goods to MacArthur Terminal in LTT 18486. These goods are unique to this mission and if lost, cannot be replaced. You'll receive your report reward upon delivery. Good luck. Hostile ships may be sent against me. Mission failure could lead to a fine. And I should plan my journey to the galaxy map. So we're going to go ahead and do that first before I actually accept the mission. I want to make sure I know precisely what I'm getting into. If I just move over to plot route, it automatically plots. In my case, I have mine set up for fastest routes. So this is... Get me to the destination as quickly as possible. Um, don't worry about saving fuel. It is two hops away. In order to maximize money, since I have one ton of additional cargo space available, I can take a look at the galaxy map to find out what type of... This is a colony and refinery. Cargo hold at maximum capacity. Now this is totally optional. You don't have to do this. If you don't want to worry about all that trade stuff, you can just run missions and be perfectly happy and make a fair bit of money. In fact, this particular, all that effort that I did is literally going to uh, net me maybe another 100 credits. So here it is. Uh, I need to retract my landing gear. And to get out and away from the station quicker, I'm going to put full power into engines. Hit the boost button, and we'll just fly out. As soon as I'm no longer mass locked, we can kick in the frame shift drive, drive charging. and begin the charging up to the jump to hyperspace. We're going to make this jump twice. This first jump, we're actually going to end up um, in super cruise near the star, so we'll bank away from the star, and then we will angle for our uh, for a second jump that's one, continuous from this one. So once again, we're into hyperspace here, uh, jumping to L... 
LH something. LHS 3447, I think is what it was. Once you complete that newbie mission, that startup mission, don't expect any further free lunch. You gotta find your own missions from there on out. One thing I want to do is I want to go here to my fire groups and I actually want to set basic discovery scanner to number two so I can use my thumb switch here and make a scan of this star and the immediate surrounding area to see if there are any discoveries to be had. Okay, so my frame shift drive has cooled off. My temperature is good. You want to keep an eye on that a little bit. We're not, not, not mass locked or anything. We can go right from Super Cruise back into hyperspace to the next system. So traversing hyperspace uh, and navigating from system to system, or from even distant connected points through a longer route, and that is a lot of what you're going to do in Elite Dangerous. So get proficient at it, it will make a big difference. Okay. You can do a scan of the area, pick up any potentials. Uh, we have this MacArthur terminal, which unfortunately is a little ways away, a little further ways away than I would normally uh, want to do a mission for. It's 12,000 light seconds, which is actually a bit of a slog. Um, it'll probably take us maybe a solid 10, 5, 10 minutes to actually get there. So here we're coming up on MacArthur terminal. We are flying by this place. It has a couple of uh, resource uh, extraction sites. If I wanted to, I could equip my Sidewinder for mining and go mine some resources and make money that way to start off with. But mission running is usually just fine. In fact, you might find some mining missions. So, um, <clears throat> in addition to the four pillars that I mentioned, there's exploration, bounty hunting, or combat of some kind, but basically bounty hunting. Um, trade and piracy and passengers the fifth pillar now um, all of those have missions a mission form available if you want to do missions and missions are what help you uh, increase your local factions as well so as you get more local faction you will find that you'll have better missions available okay I need to make contact with the terminal Docking request granted. And come and land on a, another awkwardly placed landing pad. I'm going to slow way down, get my shields up, squeeze myself in between here, and only a sidewinder can do this, by the way. Actually, that's probably Warning. Awkward. Landing gear not deployed. Got our landing gear deployed, so quit mining. And I've gone too far forward, so I'm gonna flip it into reverse. Back it landing up. Landing gear deployed. And come down. More forward. A little more down, a little more left. Oh, right. And there we go. Engines disengaged. So we can go into the MacArthur terminal and over to the mission board. <clears throat> Hmm. And here we are on the mission board. Always deliver your cargo, uh, deliver your missions first before selling cargo, just in case. Sterling work, Commander Sim Gamer. I'll, I'm hap I'll, I'd happily work with you again. So now over to the commodities market, where we have our one ton of liquor that we brought right there. Look. 833 um, credits for a single unit and we bought it for you know 400 something so we're making a profit of 336 
Not much in the grand scheme of things, but we now have 25,000 credits with which to work. Hey everyone, it is SimGamer TV in the editing room. I hope you liked this newbie startup guide episode. If you want to see more of these episodes as they come out, click the little bell icon and you'll be notified when new episodes become available. So here's what I'd like to hear from you in the comments below. Make sure you uh, post a tip or something that you wish you knew when you first started playing Elite Dangerous. Be sure to watch the next episode, which has our next mission in the Sidewinder, um, which is actually a rather long distance mission for what our current equipment, which means that along the way, we're going to be picking up an equipment upgrade. So until then, thanks for watching. Goodbye.